I'm standing in front of a beautiful portrait of Dame Nellie Melba, appropriately for our larger than life world opera star of the late 19th and early 20th century. This painting is much larger than life, nine feet or nearly 2.5 metres high and six feet, almost 1.5 metres wide. Rupert Bunny, the acclaimed Victorian artist, painted it around 120 years ago. Apparently it hung in Dame Nellie's London home until she presented it to J.C. Williamson to hang in Her Majesty's Theatre in Melbourne. Our National Gallery of Victoria purchased it back in 1980, and for many years now it's been on loan to and hanging here in Government House. It is fitting that the portrait is here. Our Government House played an important role in the then young Nellie Mitchell's career. The story goes that she was appearing at a reception hosted by our sixth governor, Lord Normanby, sometime in the early 1880s, performing on the beautiful Steinway piano in the state drawing room, when suddenly she added a vocal selection. Moved by her singing, Lady Normanby is the one credited with extending the advice to her that, child, you play brilliantly, but you sing better. Someday you'll give up the piano for singing and then you'll become famous. And she certainly did become famous. Dame Nellie Melba, as she became known, the adopted surname, a sentimental nod to her hometown of Melbourne, was the first Australian to achieve global success as an opera singer. She became a huge celebrity in America and Britain, a woman of great wealth and a generous philanthropist too. Even when world-renowned, Dame Nellie was no stranger to Government House. In January 1910, she performed here for the Governor-General, who at that time lived in this house, the Victorian Governor, and their guest, Field Marshal Lord Kitchener. It was reported in the Argus that it was so moving when Nellie Melba sang Home Sweet Home that those present could see tears rolling down Lord Kitchener's cheeks. After her death, a government house caretaker recalled the days when Melba had played on the famous Steinway Grand Piano, and as he put it, the servants used to listen outside the doors, spellbound by the diva's voice. Well, the world too had been spellbound. What wonderful memories this portrait evokes.